As you progress on your watercolor journey, you will realize that every advanced technique you see is a variation of two fundamental ways of painting, wet on wet and wet on dry. And you may be surprised to hear that even the most intricate and advanced paintings are a variation of these two methods. The secret is how we introduce nuanced variations in drying time, brush strokes, pigment saturation, and even gravity to produce a variety of different results on paper. For example, a very simple classic wet-on-wet -wet technique using just one blue color will give you a beautiful soft blend, perfect for painting cloudy skies while a different blue and a slight delay in drying time coupled with a more saturated pigment will give you more defined elongated strokes suitable for soft waves if you're painting a seascape. So follow along and I encourage you to play around with the same exercises at home because it's a really great way to understand and get comfortable with watercolor medium. You'll get a ton of new ideas and most importantly the confidence to approach new subjects. Now let's get started with the classic basic wet on wet wash. That is the foundation of everything we will do. So use a clean brush to evenly wet the entire surface with water. The paper shouldn't be excessively wet, so no dripping water. And then we apply watercolor paint using a brush loaded, let's say with some blue pigment. I'm using Thylo Blue Red Shade. And you can see that the wet surface allows the colors to spread and blend, creating very soft edges and seamless transitions from light to dark. This is great for creating dreamy backgrounds like soft skies or loose abstract washes. Now instead of clear water, let's prep the surface with some diluted pigment, for example magenta, and then add more concentrated colors, wet into wet, maybe some of that same magenta, maybe purple, blue, even some yellow. This is called a charging technique. You can think of it as a variation of traditional wet on wet, where several colors are applied consecutively onto wet surface with different degrees of saturation. So this approach allows for much more controlled color placement while still achieving these beautiful blended effects. It's great for botanical art and anything that requires very vibrant splashes of color. I have a full tutorial on this specific method for flower painting using chocolate orchids as an example and I will leave a link to it in the video description below. Let's now change it up a bit. This time we will use one color, but our strokes will be different, much more deliberate, and we will also adjust our timing a little bit, allowing our paper to dry slightly longer. So I will cover everything with my aqua green. This is a pigment from Windsor Newton, very diluted. I'll wait maybe an extra 45 seconds to a minute to let that first wash of color sink in. And then I will follow with wavy horizontal strokes using the same color, the same aqua green, but a few steps darker. This is called wet on damp and it's perfect for painting realistic seascapes, obviously, but also very useful for hair texture if you're into portraits. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because in the next video I will take you through different variations of wet on dry technique. And if you follow me on Patreon, I will be posting a real-time recording of this exercise with some additional commentary, pigment recommendations, and I will also talk about different examples of how you can use each variation of wet on wet technique in your work. There's a different variation of this wet on damp technique if you switch to a smaller, longer brush and use more concentrated pigment. In fact, you can call it damp on damp because you really want to have thick saturated color on the tip of your brush for this to work. 
If you haven't seen this before, you might be shocked just how different the effect will be once I'm done. So I wet my paper, I wait a few minutes, so almost no visible water on the surface, and I'm applying my magenta using very long brush called Rigor to create these soft lines. This wet on wet variation creates much sharper details while maintaining a sense of realism with a soft, kind of barely there, very faded blend around every stroke. It's perfect for botanical art when you want to capture petal details and leaf veins. The Blue Orchid tutorial, where I showed you this technique in detail, is actually one of my most watched videos on the channel, and it's not surprising because this method doesn't get enough attention as far as I can see on YouTube anyway, but it's so useful when you want to create soft details with your brush. In the next set of wet on wet variations, we will use gravity in different ways. You're probably very well familiar with this simple gradient, just a little bit of color on top of a wet section, and if you leave it to dry in a slight angle, the tilt of your paper will encourage the pigment to flow down gradually, resulting in a smooth transition from light to dark. I'm going to show you the so-called variegated wash, which is very similar, but you start with with one color and then end with another instead of clear water. And you can add several layers of this one after another creating very dynamic, visually interesting gradients and they would be perfect as a first layer for your landscape painting or any sort of background where you want a sense of depth and distance with gradual color transitions. The next version is a very extreme variation of the same thing, but you will need some fresh, thick paint straight from the tube. I'm going to use the side of this package to apply my paint in a straight line. I see these tutorials all over YouTube. People often use like credit cards to apply paint this way, sort of mimicking a horizon line. But notice this time we have so much more of pigment. It's sort of like sitting on top of the paper, not getting full absorbed and we follow with lots of clear water using a large flat brush while holding our paper on an angle so it can start falling down with gravity. The resulting gradient will be much more expressive compared to traditional wet on wet gradient or variegated wash. I don't use this because I'm not into abstract art, but it does seem to be very popular, particularly for abstract landscape explorations, and you obviously need a lot more room or a larger sheet of paper for this to work better. But the main thing is I just wanted you to observe the difference in contrast between this and the first two gradients gradients we did. For the last variation in this row, I will use some extra tools, starting with a spray bottle. So as you can see, you can wet the surface of your paper with clear water this way, instead of using a brush. And this is quite useful again for some atmospheric landscapes where maybe you want some tree shapes in a distance and you want a truly spontaneous organic shape without any hard or unnatural edges. I will come back to this in a few minutes and show you how it works with a syringe, also known as pouring technique, but for now I will let it dry and move down to the bottom row and we'll look at four additional examples, now without any gravity play. So here I want to start with the simplest and most beautiful variation of wet on wet called blooming technique. I use this all the time and it works best with granulating pigments. I will use Tundra Violet from Schminke and Green Appetite Genuine from Daniel Smith. Granulating just means they have heavier particles of paint, so when they dry out the particles sort of settle in clumps and it creates a very nice texture. And the way we will accentuate this further is by adding drops of clear water wet into wet. Now notice how heavy water drops just push that paint out and it creates a really cool irregular sort of border effect. Sometimes it's called cauliflower. 
you can't really follow this with another a layer on top because it's so heavily textured but it is enough to create a sense of dimension with just one layer and you may have seen me use this on green leaves in the sunbird tutorial sometimes i use this technique on tree branches it's really beginner friendly way of creating a visually interesting rich texture in just one layer and i highly recommend experimenting with this technique for our next wet on wet variation i'm going to sprinkle some salt onto wet surface salt absorbs moisture creating very unique effects and patterns as it interacts with the paint great for painting snowy landscapes or just creating abstract backgrounds Another useful thing I wanted to show you is called lifting, where you can literally lift your wet paint off the page to reveal the underlying white of the paper. And depending on the tool you use, it will create different shapes. So for larger cloud-like segments, I'm using tissue paper. Alternatively, you can use the edge of your clean brush to lift very fine, thin lines. This is great for creating creating highlights and correcting mistakes. You can observe this technique in more detail in this video on my channel featuring a sea lion. And the reason I'm including it as part of the wet on wet variations is because this technique works best on freshly painted surface. It can in some cases work after your paint is dry, but only if you used very low staining pigments. So for example, you can lift viridian green long after it's dry because it's low staining but something like thylo green will stain the paper much more and you can only lift it effectively while it's still wet finally i wanted to show you a soft edge technique this is useful when you want to create a soft border between contrasting blocks of color by painting them close together so here we're still using wet on wet application because we don't want the colors to mix together too much we need to apply them with a bit of a delay Timing is key with this approach, so your first pigment should be slightly damp before you place the second one next to it, and this way you keep the visual separation, but there are no harsh lines between the two blocks of color. And as promised, I will come back and quickly show you how pouring technique works using several pigments. Some of them I will apply using a syringe. And here I'm being very generous with the amount of both water and paint, literally pouring it in some cases on my paper, much more water than typical wet on wet. And I'm using gravity to direct the colors on paper as they're blending together. So you get a very intense mix. Mix. I showed you this method in detail in this video where we painted a swan and you can see how dynamic these color transitions can look. Just make sure you use very thick paper that can hold a lot of water for this to work successfully. So let me know in the comment section below if you can think of any other examples of wet on wet technique with variations in timing, color saturation and different brush strokes and I will see you next week with an in-depth exploration of wet on dry technique. Thank you for watching and painting with me.